In our morning rounds, a quadriplegic man is able to move his hands again thanks to groundbreaking technology. It's the first of its kind system. It uses a paralyzed patient's brain waves to guide his muscles. Now, we first introduced you to this extraordinary research back in 2014. Adriana Diaz talked with a patient and the team reaching out to the future. Open as wide as you can, relax. When we first met Ian Berker two years ago, this flick of his finger was a scientific breakthrough. He hadn't moved his hands since severing his spine in a diving accident six years ago, until he did what no quadriplegic has ever done, move his own muscles with his thoughts. I thought it was really crazy that we were able to even move my hand originally, and now to be able to do all the different tasks that we can do, it's mind-blowing. Mind-blowing because a paralyzed man can now play the guitar. A toy one, but still. I'm most excited about the movements that are just everyday movements in life. Picking up a cup and pouring it into something else, or picking up a credit card and swiping it through a credit card reader. Things he thought he'd never do again. The fruit of hundreds of hours of practice. He's even surprised his research team, including engineer Nick Anetta of Battelle, the company that built the system. That was, that was really good. <laughs> nice job, man. We've made a ton of progress uh, since last time you saw us. And uh, it's actually, it shocked us what, what Ian's been able to do. Rubber shot. Two years ago, a microchip was implanted into the part of Ian's brain that controls movement. A cable transmits the brain signals through a port in his head to a computer. The computer then decodes his thoughts about movement and beams commands to electrodes in a sleeve that stimulate his muscles like an out-of-body spinal cord. Does it weird you out at all that a computer is essentially reading your mind? No, I'm just glad they can find something up there. <laughs> but there are limitations. Ian's had hardware in his head for two years. Do people ever ask you about it? Sometimes I think a lot of people look at it and are afraid to ask. It's not too bad anymore. And he has to be at the hospital for it all to work. Ian not being able to take home this technology when, when he goes back and leaves the session, that's it's the biggest shame of, of all of this. This chip is implanted in an area of the brain called the motor cortex. And Dr. Ali Razai is the neurosurgeon leading the team at the Ohio State University Wexner Medical Center. He says the apparatus could become portable in a decade. But I think there's no reason why this technology cannot be used to make somebody who's paralyzed to walk again or somebody who's quadriplegic to move their arms routinely. Ian's return to movement will be short-lived for now. The chip will be removed when the clinical trial ends this summer. Ian's having this incredible experience, and you're going to have to take that away? I wish we didn't have to, but this really uh, is an impetus for us for future to develop more longer-term implants. Ian says he doesn't mind. It might be something that I'm just helping further generations, and I'm completely fine with that. For Ian, any chance to outmaneuver paralysis is a move in the right direction. For CBS This Morning, Adriana Diaz, Columbus, Ohio. Exciting. Another so exciting. example of what the technology yeah. can do. Somebody's looking at that right now going, that gives me hopes that this hope is, that I didn't know This is I just had. the beginning. I mean, Scott Pelley's done a lot of pieces uh -huh. about this, and it's just amazing. It is. Really good stuff.